This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 89. As usual, we have some cool new features to talk about, so make sure your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Let's start with YouTube Music and here I will show you three new features. The first one is the addition of a new page under Explore specifically for podcasts. When you compare this to the same page before the change, we used to have only three options. And when you go inside, you will see some carousels with the recommendations based on your usage. Some of them have the more button that will show you even more suggestions while others don't. The second change is under samples and now Google is using outlined buttons unlike before. Plus, now you can see the likes count under the thumbs up button and the ad is now called save. The third and last change is the redesigned cast menu, which is something I already talked about in episode 79, but now it's more widely available. While I do like the fact that the card is now showing at the bottom of the screen for easier reachability, but it has one problem. When you start casting, we no longer have a stop cast button like the previous design, but for you to stop the casting, you have to choose this phone first. And as you see, the music doesn't stop. You have to stop it yourself. So it's a two-step process, or maybe you can pause the music first and then uh, tap on the cast menu and choose this phone. So either way, it's a two-step process, but previously it was only one. That's it with YouTube Music. And now let's talk about Google Play Store. The first and most exciting change in this episode is the ability to download two apps at the same time. So let me show you a quick example. I will download this game and this one as well, and then go back to the home screen. As you see, the first one is downloading and the second one is downloading as well. But keep in mind that this new feature only works with the new downloads and it doesn't apply to updates. The second change is the addition of a new label for government apps. So let me show you a quick example. You can see it in the list over here. So it says government, government, and so on. And when you go inside the app listing, you can see the same thing and you can tap on it to learn more. This feature only works with a limited number of apps in certain countries as shown now on the screen. And lastly, the memories timeline now supports Material 3 design where you can see a gap in the middle and a dot at the end of the line. Now let's talk about Google Chrome on desktop. It got a very handy extension that will give you access to Gemini directly from your address bar. All you need to do is to type the at sign, then the word Gemini. In the results, you will find chat with Gemini. When you choose the option, you have the ability to start typing your command right away. Once you hit the enter key, it will take you to gemini.google.com with the answer to your prompt. That's it with Google Chrome. And now let's talk about the search. The first change, when you tap on the ellipses next to the result, you will get this revamped page with the ability to share the article, save it, and send feedback from here or visit the website. When you scroll down, the X at the top right corner will get a fill color, plus you will get much more information about what you see, like the source, the personalization, and more information about the search result and how it works. And when it comes to the sponsored results, when you tap the ellipses, you will see much more options. You can like, block, report, see more or fewer ads like this using the minus and the plus button. You can customize more for the ads that you see, more information about the advertiser and why you are seeing this app. Next, the Google app. And it only got one new change, which is the notifications tab that you can access from the navigation bar. Here you can see all your unread notifications with an unread dot on the left side if you didn't interact with them. Plus, when you tap on the ellipses, you have the ability to delete the notification, turn off the notification for this specific item or send feedback. And when it comes to articles, you can choose not interested in this to avoid more recommendations in the future. This is the same exact feature we first saw on iOS and now it made its way to Android. Now let's talk about Google Wallet and here we have four new features. The first change is the new open wallet shortcut that you get in the payment screen, which will take you right away to the wallet app. The second change, when you try to add a new payment card and then cancel the process in the middle, the app will offer you a reminder the next day to finish the process when it's convenient for you. And here you have the option to say no thanks or get reminder. 
And when you go ahead and add your card, you will see slightly redesigned wizard with a tip at the bottom saying you don't need to open wallet to tap to pay, just unlock your phone and hold it near the reader, which will give people heads up about this hidden feature. The last change is the new payment methods menu item that replaces the previously used participating banks. From here, you can check all the payment methods you have. You can reorder them if you have multiple ones or get a quick access to them by tapping on the card. Next, the files app and it got a slightly better search. Now when you tap on the search bar, you will see the filters are categorized for easier understanding. So for example, when I tap on category, I have all the options in this card floating at the bottom of the screen. Then I have the option to choose the date or sort by. And that matches the new filters we saw in Google Drive app. Now let's talk about the Fitbit app, which got a complete revamp for the sleeping data. So here's one of the examples I have. You will first see the sleep duration card with the sleep score showing at the bottom. Tapping on this card will take you to this redesigned page. You have filters at the top to choose between day, week, month, or year. Then you have your score. Then you have that chart, which looks totally different when compared to the previous version. It shows the awake, rapid eye movement, light and deep sleep. From here, you can also check the sleep stages, the benchmark and the 30 day average. And here are some more information about your sleep. And for reference, here is how the same page used to look before this redesign. Android's reading mode app also got a new feature, which is the ability to use it in Gmail and social media apps. As an example, here is a post on X and when I tap on the button, it has the ability to read the post for me, which wasn't the case before. I also tried it in reading emails, posts on LinkedIn and Facebook. It did work, but not 100% of the time. And the last app I'm gonna talk about in this video is Android Auto. This is the first time for me to see an AI feature on Android Auto that you can access by going to settings and then scroll down a bit until you find play AI message summaries that you can toggle on or off. I sent myself a long text message to show you how it works. The first step is to tap on play aloud and then you have an option to play messages. Then you will get another option to summarize if you want and that's when it will read the summarized version. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you in Google Apps. And if you spotted any new thing, please reach me out on social media to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.